Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Now at 4.30, an overnight stabbing on the west side sends one man to the hospital. Our Sarah Acosta is live with what we've learned about the investigation. We have the results from the New Hampshire primary. I'm Trevor Alt in Manchester. I'll tell you who performed well and who did not coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam. Boy, a messy commute for us this morning. Hopefully it will be gone and clear by the time you head to work or school. And hey, good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is February 12th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. All right, everybody got two days to get that Valentine's Day present. Yeah. Chop, 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 everybody. Actually, only one day because you need to have it when you wake up Friday morning. Ideally. Because Rules by Leslie? Just saying. Okay, you you got not got a microphone there? Okay. Yeah, he's got a microphone. We'll find you a new one. Uh, anyway, yeah, if you're heading out this morning, by the I think by the the heart of the morning commute, everything should be most everything as far as rain should be out of here. Now we're still going to have some uh, leftovers, a lot of runoff. There's a lot of ponding on the roads. Uh, one of the guys, one of our uh, photographers, came in and said, "Boy, there's a lot of water on the road this morning." Obviously, Marcus is going to have more on that. But as expected, this has been moving through the area, um, basically between midnight and about roughly uh, 4:30. There are a couple of lightning strikes being detected, just uh, say Northern Bear County up there around New Braunfels in parts of Kamau County and even around Bandera. And it's basically moderate rain, a couple of heavier downpours. At last count, it was just under a half an inch of rain that was picked up out there at the airport. Obviously, some areas have picked up even more than that. And these uh, moderate showers will continue. It looks like even a lightning strike over there on the northeast side over by uh, Live Oak. And again, all this continues off to the east. And just looking at all the, the data, all the information, most of it's going to be gone in the next couple of hours. So the really the heart of the commute gets going about what 630 7 o'clock. So most of the heavy rain is going to be out here. Roads will still be wet, of course. And with the uh, heavy rain, there is a little bit of fog mixed in as well. So reduced visibility It's nothing too pea soup. It's cold out there. It's bone chilling cold mid and some lower 40s, even a couple of upper 30s. There is a bit of a wind chill to deal with on top of that. And at least uh, all the allergens are low. Mold's probably going to be uh, going up a little bit given all this moisture around here throughout the rest of the morning. We do have temperatures staying about mid 40s. Rain is going to end from west to east as in the next uh, couple of hours and then we are going to see some sunshine thrown in later on today and it's going to be a fairly nice day on the coolish side 62 degrees and it's got another front moving on through here. Beautiful way to end up the work week, but it's going to be cold. Details coming up and a look at the weekend time saver traffic right now. All right, Officer Trujillo, any uh, problems with all this rain out there? Well, we do have one at least and we're going to go out uh, to 1604. Now we did have an accident being reported on I-10 around the Hildebrand Fresno area. Officers did go out there, didn't find anything, but there was an accident on the uh, southbound lanes of 1604 up there at Hausman. It was just past the Hausman Bridge. Now, this is 1604 at Hausman, so we don't get a good shot of it here, but we do have a number of emergency vehicles out there. So just remember, slow down. You want to put both hands on the steering wheel, put away those distractions, reduce your speed by about 10 miles an hour at least, and give it an extra 10 to 15 minutes this morning. Everywhere we'd look, there's not only slick streets, but ponding on the road. So could be a very long commute for some folks. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. What started as a family argument ended with a man getting stabbed in the head early this morning on the city's west side. It happened in the 600 block of South Navidad, which is near West Martin and North Zarzamora. Our Sarah Costa is live at Public Safety Headquarters. So, Sarah, how did all this start? Good morning, Lab. Well, police say it was a family feud between a boyfriend and a girl and the girl and his girlfriend's family. Police say a man in his 30s was at his home on the, in the 600 block of South Navidad with his girlfriend when her family showed up, and that's when that argument started. Police say just after midnight, the girlfriend's aunt and her aunt's boyfriend showed up to his house. The aunt and her boyfriend said they wanted to take the man's girlfriend somewhere. The man refused to let her family members take her. That's when police say a tug of war with the girlfriend started. The aunt's boyfriend stepped in with a knife and stabbed the man twice, once in the back and once in the head. Police say when they arrived, the victim was not cooperating with the officers. The victim was taken to Bamsey in stable condition. As for the aunt's boyfriend, who police say stabbed that man, police say they continue to search for him this morning after he fled the scene. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie.
Thank you, Sarah. Now to the latest on a shooting that happened last night on the west side. Investigators are trying to find the person who shot a 16-year-old boy in the back. Police say that the 16-year-old boy may or may not have been shot at Monterey Park. After the shooting, friends of the victim drove him to a home on Miracle Lane. He had a life-threatening gunshot wound. He was rushed to University Hospital. According to police, details are limited due to conflicting stories from witnesses. Police remain, or still, I should say, looking for a suspect. In your morning headlines, America has its first declared state victory in the 2020 campaign. Senator Bernie Sanders has won the New Hampshire primary, narrowly defeating Mayor Pete Buttigieg. And other candidates once seen as front runners had a tough night, and two candidates have even dropped out. ABC's Trevor Alt has a breakdown from Manchester. New Hampshire voters have spoken. Senator Bernie Sanders wins the first in the nation primary. This victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. Sanders had won New Hampshire in 2016 by 22 points, but this victory far closer, edging out Mayor Pete Buttigieg by only a few thousand votes. A campaign that some said shouldn't be here at all has shown that we are here to stay. Rounding out the top tier, Senator Amy Klobuchar, riding a late wave of support from her most recent ABC debate performance, and pushing a message of unity and sensibility. Donald Trump's worst nightmare is that the people in the middle, the people who have had enough of the name calling and the mud slinging, have someone to vote for in November. <laughs> But for several candidates, the night was underwhelming at best. Andrew Yang and Senator Michael Bennett have now dropped out, while Senator Elizabeth Warren and former Vice President Joe Biden, once frontrunners nationally, both finished with single-digit support. Still, they're vowing to fight on. All right, come from, that's the opening bell, not the closing bell. And remember, these state votes are about more than just seeing who wins. They're about collecting delegates for the nomination. And that math can be a little bit odd. Even though Senator Bernie Sanders has gotten more votes in Iowa and New Hampshire, Mayor Pete Buttigieg has earned two more delegates than Sanders has. Trevor Ault, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Acting White House Budget Director Russ Vaught appearing before the House Budget Committee today to testify about President Trump's $4.8 trillion budget proposal. The proposal reduces future spending to Medicaid, Medicare, and other social safety programs by reforming how providers are paid but would not directly affect the beneficiary's costs. The proposal also includes increased funding for the military and NASA. The coronavirus death toll is more than 1,000, and here in the U.S., there's an increase to 13 cases of the disease. In Arizona, researchers are working on a vaccine to attack the virus. Three scientists over ASU's Biodesign Institute in Tempe are using mammal cells from monkeys, plants, and pox cells as part of the research. However, the team has to wait for a copy of the coronavirus gene to arrive to start actually working on a vaccine. They expect to have it, though, as early as next week, but it could take up to a month to develop the vaccine. The 2020 census just a month away for a huge part of the country, and that's why the Census Bureau's director will be talking to lawmakers on Capitol Hill today. They will be questioning Steve Dillingham on a wide range of issues. They want to make sure that they are ready to conduct the census, get people involved, and hire enough workers to get the job done. This comes as lawmakers have spoken up about concerns about this year's census. Right now it's 438, 44 degrees. Gas prices are less than two bucks a gallon, everybody. But for how long will the low prices last? Find out coming up on GMSA. Go Spurs, go Spurs in their losing streak on the rodeo road trip. They got a win in OKC. We have the highlights next on GMSA. Hallelujah. About time, right? We needed that. We also need the rain and we're getting some of that, but it's going to make your morning cute a little bit messy. We've got details coming up. Finally, a break for the San Antonio Spurs and all Spurs fans. After losing five in a row, the Spurs topped the Oklahoma City Thunder last night, 114-106. LaMarcus Aldridge led the team with 25 points and 14 rebounds. Now the Spurs are headed into the All-Star break with a victory. It was a welcome change after this tough stretch. Next game is not until Friday, February 21st, 9 p.m. against the Utah Jazz. Whew! Shoo! Can we do that about 20 more times, please? Yes, and at least we're smiling this morning when talking about the silver and black for once. Yes. 442, 44 degrees. Are gas prices staying low? If so, for how long? We're going to look into it coming up on GMSA.
Actor Jesse Smollett indicted. What are the charges? That's next in your GMA First Look. Welcome back. Your time now, 445. Almost a year later, a special prosecutor has indicted Jesse Smollett, the actor who allegedly made up the story of the racially motivated attack. ABC's Alex Perez has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, indicted actor Jesse Smollett facing a new set of criminal charges nearly a year after prosecutors dropped similar charges against him for allegedly staging a homophobic and racist attack. A grand jury indicting the 37-year-old on six counts of disorderly conduct related to making false statements about last year's alleged attack. That special prosecutor, Dan Webb, appointed to review the case after Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox abruptly dropped the charges against Smollett in March of last year. Fox, who's up for re-election, telling me back then... Our office uh, handles cases like this, class four felonies, disorderly conduct, many of them uh, with similar outcomes. We'll have the latest on Jesse Smollett coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. It's enough for a driver to do a double take. Gas selling for less than $2 a gallon at several stations across town. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains why and how much longer these lower prices are likely to stick around. This Valentine's week, kiss $2 a gallon gas goodbye, at least for now. How does 186 sound? Oh, that sounds wonderful. I love it. For the first time in a year, the average local price is now less than two bucks a gallon, dropping a nickel in the past week, down 19 cents in the past month. The reason we're seeing prices drop like that is simple supply and demand. People drive less in winter, and then there's the coronavirus. Fears that the virus will hurt China's economy and appetite for oil have pushed the price of crude down, and that means lower prices for folks topping off their tanks. Does it matter to you? Oh, yeah, how, how especially much? when I put super on that itself. Longoria's car drinks the premium stuff, but he's not complaining. Last year in December was about 268, something like that, so it does make a difference. No matter what your fuel of choice, drivers are getting a winter break. My husband's always filling up every week, and he has diesel, so. We found diesel for two thirty-four a gallon and some of the cheapest gas on the northeast side of town. Fill up for one something while you can. Analysts say after another week or two, prices likely will do a U-turn as we head into spring. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 447. Let's check on the roadways. We know we have wet roads to deal with, Marcus. We do have wet roads. We also have a couple of accidents uh, that are already out there. So, folks, even though it, everything is in the green, you will want to give it some extra time. You're going to have to reduce that speed this morning. Uh, we have ponding on the roads uh, throughout our viewing area, so watch out uh, for that. Both hands on the wheel. Right now, looking, this is a one vehicle accident, southbound lanes of 410, or 1604, rather. So you're headed from I 10 back over towards Bandera Road, and just as you're going over that Houseman Bridge, the overpass there, uh, you will see a number of emergency vehicles uh, down at the, the bottom of that bridge. Uh, as they're tending to a one vehicle accident, and we have another one here, 410 at McCullough. Take a look. Off to the side, so they are on that shoulder, but Look at the reflection there, and in certain areas you can see right there some puddles and ponds out there on the highway. So you will have to use both hands. Put away those distractions this morning. 281 at Bassey Road. Just look at the amount of spray being kicked up by those vehicles north and southbound along uh, 281 through that stretch over there by the almost basin. And if you uh, look real hard, just uh, sit down for a second because uh, it's going to take you a while to get. Don't be in that much of a rush. It's going to take you a while to get to work this morning. You can see it is coming down pretty good in this area. Let's move over here. Here's a camera we don't get too often. Highway 90 at Military. Not only the main lanes, but the access road as well. Nice and wet and sloppy. So you will have to leave an extra 10 to 15 minutes early. Boy, that's a big pond right there, right oh, there. Especially in that slow lane right here. Here comes this vehicle. You'll see it. And right there he hits it. But it's not just the ponding. It's the spray from the big rigs, too, that yeah, really get you. 
Mm -hmm. So be careful. Well, and and we need the rain. Oh yeah. Well, overall numbers have not, haven't been off the charts, but a lot of this just came within you know the course of an hour or two. Yeah. And some of the rainfall rates, some of the heavier downpours, have been an inch, two inches per hour, and that's coming down pretty good. And that's why we're seeing some of that the runoff and the ponding. So even once this gets on out of here, we're still going to be dealing with uh, some of that. And again, here are some of the these are estimates from the uh, radar sites, and we've had this band in. The the hill country inch inch and a half two inches of rain one little spot on the west side of San Antonio about to just over an inch out there at the airport at last measure it was just under a half an inch of rain and all of this the individual cells are kind of sliding up to the north and the whole thing is moving from west to east so there obviously is still some rain back out to, in portions of the hill country but this is moving along at a fairly decent clip and most all of this because obviously some folks have started their commute already but most everybody leaves uh, about what 6 30 7 o'clock when it really gets going toward the end of GMSA and a lot of this is going to be out of here by then. We do still have a couple of lightning strikes being detected as well and uh, some of those moderate showers. We had a real hefty downpour move across the station about uh, what, half an hour ago and it didn't last all that long. So this is continuing to, to get on out of here. It is cold. It is damp. It's one of those bone chilling kind of mornings. 44 in town, 39 up the road toward Bernie, 38 in Lost Maples, and then a little bit of wind chill on top of that. It feels like 33 right now in Lost Maples. Wind out of the northwest about uh, eh, 10 miles per hour on average, and it's not going to be overly breezy today. So here's the computer model, and a couple of them are kind of showing the exact same thing. This is that rapid update model. So we've got it's initializing with the rain around here, but then by eight o'clock in the morning, most of it is out of, we'll still have a couple leftover showers, but most of the, the heavier downpours are out of the metropolitan area and continuing to work their way off to the east. We'll still have plenty of clouds by noon, but then we're going to have partly cloudy skies by later on this afternoon. More sunshine, we make it up into the low 60s. Nice afternoon and lots of sunshine for the next couple of days. Then, But we do have another front moving on through here, so that's going to keep us on the chilly side the next couple of days. We'll have some cold mornings tomorrow morning and Friday. Friday morning and staying only say upper 50s for the next couple of days, but plenty of sunshine 55 today at noon. We'll still have clouds hanging around here and then a little bit more sunshine later on in the afternoon. We'll make it up to 62 degrees northeasterly wind at 5 to uh, 10 miles per hour. And then tomorrow we start off at 40 35 Friday morning and only again mid to upper uh, 50s. And then we continue on into the weekend. We're going to have lots of clouds around here over the weekend. It could be a stray shower too. Kind of doubtful, but could be one or two of them. I think a better chance of rain is going to be late next, or excuse me, later on in the seven day forecast toward the middle part of next week and another fairly decent front perhaps by about Wednesday of next week. So morning kind of sloppy, but we salvage the afternoon. Yeah, and we'll still have lots of water on the roads mm -hmm. for the morning commute, but most of the heavy rain and most of the rain is going to be out of here in the next couple of hours. Valentine's Day looks very nice. It's going to be snuggle weather. Aw, thank you. Snuggle weather. 453, 44 degrees. A social satire movie finally being released after getting a whole lot of criticism last year. More about the release date coming up next. A controversial movie finally has a release date after being canceled last year. Here's ABC's Romina Hugo with the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Universal Pictures says it'll release the social satire The Hunt, a film it canceled amid criticism of elites hunting people for sport in red states. The film, which stars Hillary Swank, was initially scrapped last August amid backlash from President Trump. The Hunt hits theaters March 13th. Dwayne Wade says he's proud of his transgender daughter. The retired basketball star spoke about support for his 12-year-old, who now goes by Zaya, on the Ellen DeGeneres show Tuesday. We are proud, when I say proud, we are proud parents um, of a child in the LGBTQ plus uh, community, and we're proud allies as well. Wade adds he and his wife, Gabrielle Union, are determined to find all the information they can to be educated and informed about being parents of an LGBTQ child. And happy birthday, Josh Brolin. The No Country for Old Men actor turns 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Romina Puga, ABC News. Good movie. Mm. Disturbing movie, No Country for Old Men. 456, 44 degrees. Ahead in our next half hour, the latest on an extraordinary turn of events involving President Donald Trump's longtime friend, and former campaign advisor Roger Stone. And we're checking out the newest Samsung smartphones that will be arriving in a store near you. 
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A suspect is on the run this morning after stabbing a man in the head and the back overnight. We have details on a live report. Coming up, the entire prosecution team in a case against a former Trump ally resigns. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington with the latest on the case against Roger Stone. And we do have rain in the area right now. Some of it is uh, pretty heavy in places, maybe a uh, thunderbolt or two. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is February 12th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Yeah, by the time you probably go to work or school, the rain should pretty much be gone, but the roads will still be wet. When does Mother Nature turn the faucet off, Mike Oster H? Uh, we're going to continue to keep rain around for the next couple of hours, and by the really once the morning commute gets going, most of this is going to be uh, working its way off to the east. It is damp and cold out there. Boy, bundle up. And the next couple of mornings going to be really, really chilly, but you know we've got all this moisture out there, so the temperatures are in the 40s and 30s, and uh, we've got uh, relatively speaking a lot of humidity out. There. There with those dew points at 42 and that slight breeze. So on top of all the damp chill, there's a bit of a wind chill to deal with. This is what it looks like on radar right now. And as expected, this band of uh, some moderate to heavy showers continued to work their way through the area from about midnight. And, you know, I had said about uh, 430. So we're at five o'clock right now. It's continuing to get on out of here. And let me see if the Weather Service website has updated as far as rainfall totals out there at the airport. So now we've picked up about uh, almost two thirds of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport since it all started. Some areas have picked up about an inch to uh, two inches of rain in portions of the hill country. And these are pretty much uh, light to moderate showers, a couple of little heavier spots here and there. And there have been and still maybe a couple of, uh, as Mark mentioned, a couple of lightning strikes being detected by radar. And just as soon as we get kind of the light rain, Another patch of uh, some moderate rain moves on through here. Now, it hasn't been number wise anything just off the charts, but a lot of this fell almost all at once. Rainfall rates have been uh, inch, two inches per hour, which is enough to get all that runoff and a lot of ponding on the roads. And Marcus is going to be showing you that in a moment. So even though once the rain stops in the next couple of hours, we're still going to have a lot of ponding on the roads. 45 in town, 41, Bernie Comfort, Bandera. And again, those wind chill temperatures down, uh, knock a couple of degrees off the actual air temperature. Molds on the moderate side from yesterday. I have a feeling that is going to be going up today. Low amounts of everything else. And rain will end from west to east in the next couple of hours. A little more sunshine later on today. Partly cloudy skies. It is going to be warmer. We'll make it up into the low 60s later on. So almost up to normal and then we do have another front moving on through here so that's going to make for some cold mornings then sunshine chilly afternoons tomorrow and friday but good looking days and then the weekend it is going to be warmer we will have more clouds maybe eh, maybe just one or two showers kind of scattered about here and there details coming up time saver traffic right now here is officer marcus trujillo any big accidents yes mike we still have those two accidents now we can add a third one to it so we're going up to northbound <coughs> excuse me northbound 35 headed back over towards new braunfels right there at fm 1103 which is uh, also the exit for hubertus road so depending on which side of the highway you're headed towards uh that's where we have in these, uh, the major accidents you can see Traffic is backing up quite a bit, so backing up all the way uh, starting there at FM 3009. Another accident we're still clearing. This is a 1604 southbound lanes right there, just over the Hausman overpass and then eastbound 410. The exit ramp right there for Airport Boulevard, right before you go underneath the 281 flyover connectors, that ramp currently closed due to an accident. So remember, folks, put away those distractions, those cell phones, those coffee cups, and both hands on the wheel this morning. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. Police looking for the man responsible for stabbing another in the head early this morning over on the west side. It happened in the 600 block of South Navidad Street. Sarah Costa is live at Public Safety Headquarters. Sarah, what do we know about this investigation? Good morning, Mark. Well, it started as police say a family argument turned tug of war turned stabbing. Police say it was a man in his 30s. He was at his home the 600 block of South Navidad on the west side with his girlfriend. That's when police say just after midnight, the girlfriend's aunt and her aunt's boyfriend showed up to his house. The aunt and her boyfriend said they wanted to take the man's girlfriend somewhere. The man refused to let her family members take her. That's when police say a tug of war with the girlfriend started. The aunt's boyfriend stepped in with a knife and stabbed the man twice, once in the back and once in his head. 
Police say when they arrived, the victim was not cooperating with officers. The victim was taken in stable condition to Bamsey. As for the aunt's boyfriend who stabbed that 30 year old man, he fled the scene when police arrived. Police continue to look for him this morning. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you very much, Sarah. Bernie Sanders celebrating today after winning New Hampshire, the, the New Hampshire presidential primary election last night, but he barely beat his rival, Pete Buttigieg. With the win, Sanders scores the first clear victory in the Democratic Party's chaotic 2020 nomination fight. Senator Amy Klobuchar finished a strong third, giving her campaign an unexpected boost, while Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden finished way behind. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania Trump will host Spain for a state visit coming up next month. The White House says King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia are being welcomed to reaffirm, quote, commitments to stand together to address today's shared global challenges. The visit, which is actually happening in April, includes an official state dinner. The King and Queen of Spain have been to the Trump White House once before. That was back in 2018. This state visit will be the third of the Trump administration. Right now, it is 505. Four federal prosecutors have now withdrawn from the case against Roger Stone. He's the longtime ally of the president and former campaign advisor. Stone's prosecutors had recommended he spend seven to nine years in prison after his conviction in the Mueller investigation. But just 24 hours later, and after criticism from the president, the Department of Justice is calling the sentencing request extreme and excessive. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest from Washington. A stunning reversal in the sentencing recommendation for President Trump's longtime confidant, Roger Stone. At least four prosecutors stepping down from Stone's case after a dramatic decision to overrule their recommendation, he spends seven to nine years in prison. For the attorney general to step in in this way at this point is practically unheard of. The stunning rebuke from the Justice Department leadership came just hours after the president tweeted that the prosecutor's suggested sentence for Stone was, quote, horrible and very unfair, a miscarriage of justice. I thought it was ridiculous. Roger Stone was convicted last year of lying to Congress, witness tampering, and obstructing a congressional investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. I believe this is a politically motivated investigation. Prosecutors had originally recommended a lengthy sentence, arguing Stone tampered with a witness for months. But a Justice Department spokesman later called their recommendation extreme and excessive and maintains the decision to reverse the recommendation came before the president's tweet. Justice Department, did speak to the just, I'd be able to do it if I wanted. I Democrats to slamming the recommendation reversal. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler tweeting, it appears that the president and the attorney general have overruled career prosecutors in order to help Roger Stone. And Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer writing a letter to the inspector general requesting an investigation. The president was also critical of the judge presiding in this case. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. It's now eight minutes past the hour, 45 degrees. Still ahead, you know how the soft service ice cream machines at McDonald's seem to always break down? It looks like they're getting an upgrade fix that. We'll tell you about it. And Disney once again raising prices for tickets at its theme parks. We'll tell you about how much and how much that next trip, the happiest place on earth, could cost you. And live cam giving us a look outside. We're looking for a couple of great days after we get through this rain this morning. Mike has details. Your time now, 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, the next time you fly southwest, pay attention to what your flight attendant says right after those instructions about your oxygen mask. Southwest will now ask passengers to report unwelcome behavior to a flight attendant. A spokesman for Southwest says it's an effort to ensure a safe and welcoming environment at all times. Flight attendants have established procedures about what to do, including reseating a customer, notifying the captain, and getting law enforcement involved upon landing. Trip to a Disney theme park is going to cost you more starting this year. Ticket prices have been, uh, increases rather, have been announced for both Disneyland and Disney World. Annual passes have increased between 4 and 8 percent, depending on which plan you purchase. For Disneyland, the most expensive one-day park hopper will now cost you $200 a person for the first time ever. Higher ticket prices come as Disney California Adventure prepares to open its Marvel Avengers Campus. Full pricing for Disney World. In Orlando and Disneyland and Anaheim can be found 
on the park's website and you can refinance your house. <laughs> 512, 45 degrees. Have you seen the movie Parasite yet? We'll tell you about a huge jump in ticket sales following the movie's big success at the Oscars. Makes sense. And next, if you're annoyed at how often the ice cream machine breaks down at McDonald's or Burger King, there's now hope. We'll tell you about some upgrades those machines are now getting. I didn't have to shout out for help. Because you didn't have another DVT. Not today. One blood clot puts you at risk of having another. So we chose Xarelto to help keep you protected. Xarelto is proven to treat and reduce the risk of DVT or PE blood clots from happening again. Almost 98% of people did not have another DVT or PE. Don't stop taking Xarelto without talking to your doctor, as this may increase your risk of blood clots. While taking, a spinal injection increases the risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. You may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. Xarelto can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. It may increase your risk of bleeding if you take certain medicines. Get help right away for unexpected expected bleeding or unusual bruising. Do not take Xarelto if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. Before starting, tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures and any kidney or liver problems. Help protect yourself from another DVT or PE. Ask your doctor about Xarelto. To learn more about cost and how Janssen can help, visit Xarelto.com. Samsung has announced five new devices during a special unveiling event. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brooks have details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Samsung unfolds news about its new phones. Yeah, the company unveiled five new phones in an event yesterday, including the Galaxy Z Flip. Samsung says it will be the most affordable phone of its kind, starting at less than $1,400. And the coronavirus could force the cancellation of a big annual tech conference. The Mobile World Congress is scheduled for later this month in Barcelona. Organizers are meeting Friday to decide whether to cancel it because of virus concerns. Many big tech companies like Amazon and Sony already have said they won't attend. And a high-tech upgrade is coming to the ice cream machines at fast food restaurants. Yeah, the soft serve machines are notorious for being out of service at McDonald's. Bloomberg reports that new software is being installed to make them easier to fix. Burger King is also installing the software. Finally, using technology for good. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. So the soft serve needs a software update? <laughs> no, I'm just at it. That's what it's that's that's exactly yeah. in. Okay. All right. I guess <laughs> I didn't I guess I didn't realize they broke down that often. Oh yes, and people get very upset when they go to get their McFlurry and the McFlurry sheet is down. I believe it. My, uh, Marcus, have you experienced uh, this as well? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but how often Sorry, do you that, have that's them? That's just that's not one of my priorities. Okay. How often do you have them? I don't. That's the point. Yeah, oh, I've, I've got I've got other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but for some folks, hey, that is their priority. So more power to them. Uh, one thing you will need uh, more of this morning is patience. You will need some more patience and some time. Right now, we're looking at a complete closure of northbound 35. All those folks that normally head up towards New Braunfels and beyond, beware. Northbound 35, all main lanes closed. All traffic must exit FM 2252 due to that major accident involving a jackknife tractor trailer. We also have an accident. Uh, this should be just about cleared up. Southbound uh, 1604 at Hausman. Now, take a look at this is that accident. Uh, complete closure, northbound 35. Folks, everywhere you look, everywhere in the viewing area, the roadways are wet. Gentle application of the brake and the accelerator. No sudden jerking of the steering wheel. That'll definitely mess up your morning commute, but uh, you want to leave 10 to 15 minutes early, and you also want to reduce that speed once you head out. Mm, not good there at it. Mm -mm. 11.03. It's a mess. Thank the, you, Marcus. And the worst thing about when we had, you know, number-wise, not that much, but you have those very heavy downpours mm -hmm. and you can't see those puddles on the road. Yeah. You hit them. Yeah, and if you've got a yeah, light grip on the wheel and all of a sudden it'll yank the And if you around. do hit one of those, don't slam on the brake. The wind yesterday made it so cold. I felt like it was freezing, like literally 32 degrees outside. Yeah, it, it started, I mean, it was breezy enough, but wow, with that good the moisture in the air yeah. and those temperatures, cool. that was bone chilling. It's about the same situation this morning. Now, the wind is not as strong, but we've got all that dampness in the air, of course, with all this rain and cold temperatures, and not a lot of rain is at least uh, showing up in this picture, but a lot is definitely showing up on radar. And again, number-wise, it hasn't been off the, I mean, we'll take an inch, two inches 
inches of rain, not sneezing at that at all. Um, but it's not like we've had these torrential downpours. It's just come down pretty heavy at times. And so that's why it's been, you know, we got the runoff, we've got the ponding on the roads and there's still uh, plenty of rain around. And as you can see, everything's continuing to work its way off to the east. Uh, Showers covering most of Medina County, Uvalde County, Lakey, but we do have a there's the tail end of it out there to the west. Here in town, we still have some of these uh, light to uh, moderate showers and even a couple of uh, heavier downpours over here, say around Leon Valley. So if that's going to be moving across 10. Again, there's a couple of spots out there on 10 between 410 and 1604 where, you know, you get those puddles in the left hand lane by that uh, retaining wall and you just got to watch out for that. Temperatures are in the low to mid 40s right now. A couple of 30s out there. Bit of a breeze. So, yes, we do have a wind chill. Feels like 41 in town, 39 Rio Medina, 38 out there in Bandera. Again, that damp chill, it is it's cold this morning and wind out of the northeast. It's not, you know, anything off the charts, a little bit breezier, obviously, around Victoria, but just about, uh, say, 10 miles per hour on average, and that's where it's going to be later on today. Computer models and most are in agreement. Well, obviously, we do have rain around this morning, but in the next couple of hours, most of that is going to be out of here. We may still have a couple of leftover showers, but the moderate to heavy rain is going to continue to work its way from west to east and clear on out. We'll still keep clouds around this morning and by noon. Then things are going to be clearing out pretty nicely. So partly cloudy skies later on this afternoon and then clear skies overnight. And that's going to set us up for a cold morning tomorrow and an even colder morning on Friday. We get another reinforcing shot of some uh, colder air coming on in here. So here's the uh, satellite radar loop and everything. Individual cells are moving off to the north to northeast and the whole thing is kind of sweeping through to the east and the center of this is a low out here. Obviously some uh, snow in the higher elevations out there in uh, the western portion of the state, but this will continue to work its way across the area, push all this through here, and then we've got some uh, nice weather coming up here for this afternoon and the next couple of days. The weekend we will start to see milder temperatures. We will start to turn the volume button off there. Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> the camera went off. I had to see who was at my front door. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Probably an Amazon delivery. Uh, anyway, 55 degrees today at uh, noon with partly cloudy skies, or mostly cloudy skies, pardon me, and then partly cloudy later on this afternoon, 62 for a high temperature. Nice looking day. It's still going to be on the cool side. And like I said, going to be cold the next couple of mornings, 40 tomorrow, 35 Friday morning, and then highs only in the uh, mid to upper 50s throughout the afternoons, so it's going to stay chilly. Now, temperatures go up over the weekend. However, the moisture comes back in here, so we will have a lot more clouds this weekend. Um, maybe a little shower here or there possible, but a better chance of a few showers Monday and then especially Tuesday. And it looks like we have another fairly decent front trying to come through here by the middle of next week. Okie dokie. All is well? Yes, I just, you know, when the blink goes off, you have to see yeah. what, mm -hmm. what it's about. Is that like one of those ring cameras, right? That's exactly. Okay, got yeah. it. Uh, 522, 45 degrees. Coming up next after winning Best Picture and three other Academy Awards, the movie Parasite is seeing a huge jump in ticket sales. We're going to tell you how many people are checking out the film. In entertainment news, a Best Picture boost and more on a dramatic true story. Plus, a singer looks back on the tune that made her famous at 13. Here's CNN's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. A big Oscars bump for Parasite. The movie website Fandango says the day after the Korean film made history, winning Best Picture and three other Academy Awards, ticket sales jumped 443% over a week earlier. Parasite is the first non-English film to win the Best Picture Oscar. 123 children. Their parents were just killed by Nazis. We need to train them to survive. What good does it do to teach them fear? I think it's important to help the children laugh in the middle of this war. Resistance tells the true story of heroism amid the Holocaust. Jesse Eisenberg stars as a Jewish would-be actor whose work to save orphans led him to become the legendary mime Marcel Marceau. Resistance reaches theaters March 27th. Nine years after Friday put 13-year-old Rebecca Black in the spotlight, the singer is addressing the massive, painful backlash to the song. Black, now 22, posted on Twitter, I just wish I could go back and talk to my 13-year-old self who was terribly ashamed of herself and afraid of the world. 
Black writes that growing up, she felt depressed and alone. Classmates threw food at her, and producers said they'd never work with her. But she's now writing and releasing her own music and being kinder to herself, posting, Every day is a new opportunity to shift your reality and lift your spirit. You are not defined by any one choice or thing. Every day, even Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 527, 45 degrees. A woman's truck is hit by a train after she says she was following her phone's GPS, the latest on her condition. A certain kind of cancer that affects thousands of women every year could soon be eradicated. We'll tell you what health, health experts rather are saying about the breakthrough. Good morning. This would be your Wednesday, February 12th. Yes, it is time to get over that midweek hump. We'll do it together. I'm more worried about the commute for this morning. Well, the good news is they just now opened up northbound 35. So for a period of time, northbound 35 was completely closed between here and New Braunfels. Everyone was being forced off at exit for tw FM 2252. Right now, that's back open again. So we're starting to get some more people moving once again. However, with the standing water in a lot of different areas, and uh, we're also going to be talking to uh, Katrina Weber live up there by the airport where they have another issue related to traffic. So. Could be for a long commute for some folks. Yeah, we have a lot going on out there. We seem like we were stuck in the mid 40s most of the day yesterday. Where are we at today, Mike Osterhage? Mid 40s. Okay. So it felt really colder than that yesterday. <laughs> oh, and it feels colder than that this morning because you got the dampness and you had that wind yesterday. It's not as windy this morning, but we still have a bit of a wind chill. It is still raining out there, but most all of the rain is going to continue to move on out. I'm still thinking by, um, you know, once the commute really gets into the heart of it by 7 o'clock or so, a lot of that rain is going to be working its way off to the east and we will have some sunshine later on today 62 for a high temperature so not a bad looking day it's gonna be kind of cold the next couple of more i mean it's cold this morning but even colder the next uh, couple of mornings and staying cool in the afternoons here's a look outside with live cam right now and doesn't look too bad out there visibility is okay right now obviously if you uh, drops on the uh, the lenses there and this is what it looks like with radar and as expected the uh, heavier band of rain moved in roughly midnight and it's still working its way off to the east. We've got uh, the tail end of it. It's breaking up a little bit out in portions of the hill country. Obviously, there's still a few more moderate to mm, heavier downpours. They're going to be working their way through town at last check about two thirds of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport. But the problem has been a lot of that came almost all at once. We had these big hefty downpours rainfall rates one two inches per hour. You, you may not have gotten that much, but that's uh, that's coming down. And so that's why there's a lot of runoff. There's a lot of ponding on the roads this morning. And like I said, that's going to continue to be the case for at least uh, about the next hour and a half, two hours, and then most all of that's going to move on out. These temperatures, 45 in town, 41 in Helotus, Bandera, Comfort. There's that little bit of a bite to those temperatures, though, with some of that wind. Feels like 41 here in town, so shave a couple of notches off with the, uh, the wind chill. Mold is on the uh, moderate side this morning, and we do have light amounts of everything else. I think mold's going to be going up, though, once the updated uh, reading comes out just after 7 o'clock. Like I said, good looking couple of days. The weekend, that forecast coming up. Time saver traffic right now, and 35 northbound is opened up, correct, sir? Uh, it has just opened up. Right now, as we take a look, we're looking at uh, still have a lot of traffic on those northbound main lanes of 35, stretching from FM 1103, I'm sorry, stretching from FM 3009, rather, all the way to FM 1103. Now, that's where we had the jackknife 18-wheeler that at one time had no, all the northbound main lanes of 35 closed. Now, as you see right now, we are starting to get some traffic, but we do still have some emergency vehicles out there on the highway. So there is still uh, reason for caution on those northbound main lanes of 35. And take a look at the access road, just inundated with traffic. Moving back to 35 at FM 482, all these folks are just anxiously waiting to make it past that accident location so they can resume their commute. Now, that's not the only surprise we have going on out there. This is 410 at McCullen. As you see here, we have that exit ramp, eastbound 410, that exit ramp for the uh, San Antonio Airport Boulevard. Right now, that's closed, and I don't, uh, could, we have Katrina Weber live out there at the scene. And Katrina, I don't recall us having a problem with high water in this area before, but what do you have? Yeah, I don't ever remember seeing this, but this is definitely the case this morning. It's the exit ramp to that airport boulevard uh, exit. This is 410 eastbound, and you can see the water that is ponded here this morning. Uh, as I was driving to work, actually through this area, we got hit by a very heavy downfall, and that's the result. The water here ponded on the road. The police have at least the left lane 
closed as you continue down this access road. You can see these cars passing by. Some of them had been taking it pretty slowly because uh, the water was higher when we first got out here this morning. I also noticed that there was a police car uh, along 281, very close to the airport, sort of in that jones Maltzberger area. They also had a lane closed there because of high water. Uh, so I guess the situation is if you're coming through this area, you have to get to the airport uh, from the eastbound highway, you're going to have to find another way around. If you happen to drive around on these access roads, it might be a, a good idea to just take things slowly because you never know when you'll come upon something like this. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Other local news this morning. Don't believe everything your phone's GPS tells you. That's the lesson one woman learned early this morning after San Antonio police say her vehicle was hit by a train. It happened near the intersection of Walsham Road and Gibbs Sprawl Road on the northeast side. Just after 1 a.m., police say the woman was driving her truck, turned right on some tracks, following directions from her GPS. SAPD says a person driving by was able to pull over and pull over and help get her out of her truck just as the train crashed into it. No one was hurt. Police along with Union Pacific are investigating this incident. Acting White House Budget Director Russ Vought will appear before the House Budget Committee today to testify about President Trump's proposed $4.8 trillion budget. The proposal reduces future spending to Medicare, Medicaid, Medicare and other social safety programs by reforming how providers are paid. It also increases funding for the military and NASA. Well, it's not just us. Heavy rainfall causing headaches for more than 21 million people this week. Some residents have been forced to leave their homes as a result of those conditions. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, today these soggy states are about to get hit again. Mother Nature showing no mercy. Major flooding from Texas to the Carolinas, turning roadways into rivers and leaving families with houses full of water. We have well water, so our water is kind of murky. We don't have drinkable water at this time, and we've, we are out of food. This is the wettest start of the year for a number of regions in the southeast, and a new system starting Wednesday is expected to bring up to three more inches of rain through the southeast and into the Ohio Valley. With the water already saturating everything, that it doesn't take much to bring it back up. Other parts of the country are dealing with the aftermath of heavy rains they had earlier this week, like a major landslide in Washington County just outside of Pittsburgh. The Pennsylvania Department of Transportation says oversaturation is to blame. They came and said we might have to evacuate, so I came home from work to grab some stuff and then I couldn't get back out. And in Washington State, all roads leading into Mount Rainier National Park are closed after heavy rains cause flooding, mudslides, and road damage. It's scary. It makes you feel small. It makes you realize how big Mother Nature is. John Lawrence, KSAT 12 News. China is reporting another drop in the number of new cases of coronavirus. Still with 97 more deaths, that pushes the total past 1,100. The country is still mostly closed down to prevent spread of the disease. The uh, National Health Commission says about 2,000 new cases have been reported over the last 24 hours in China. Total number of cases in mainland China, about 45,000. Although many health experts say a large number of others infected have gone uncounted. 538, still 45 degrees. Still ahead, what health experts say one of the more common cancers among women could soon be eradicated. And next, why a recent event is motivating a local school district to do everything it can to raise awareness about mental health and suicide prevention. And Live Cam giving us a look outside on this wet start to your Wednesday morning. So happy to have you with us. We'll be right back. The Northeast Independent School District is raising awareness about mental health and suicide prevention. This after one of their own students was found unconscious in a weight room Monday afternoon. The student, 16-year-old Alonzo Jones of Ronald Reagan High School, committed suicide, according to authorities. Aubrey Chancellor with the district says they have several counselors on staff and coming to the school to help assist students during this time. She says she's praying that the family heals from this sudden death. I can't imagine um, what this family is going through. Um, we've been in contact with them. We are here to help them. We want to be as supportive as we can and whatever they need, we're here for. If you or someone you know may be experiencing a mental health crisis, you are urged to seek help immediately. It's exactly 542, 45 degrees. Still ahead, more in a new study that shows a particular cancer that affects thousands of women could soon be eradicated.
Oh my goodness gracious, we've got brother and sister right here. These two, there, there, there's your brother. Yeah, they're a little bit afraid to be on TV this morning. Cute as can be. They're going to be great dogs. You're going to meet them coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. Well, it's brother sister time and Alexis is here from the San Antonio Humane Society and oh my goodness, these babies you want to fall in love with. Oh yeah, so we have Vanessa and we have Victor right over here. They are about three month old border collie mixes and they are just the fluffiest, cutest little babies ever. And just scared to they death. They are, right they now. are. Oh, they're just hanging on, but you know, border <laughs> collies are such intelligent dogs and and great pets, but they can be a little bit, you know, you got to work them and everything yeah. like that. Maybe with a little mix in there, it kind of takes the edge yeah, off. Yeah, so hopefully, hopefully. These guys are probably going to be just perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're going to be, you know, a little bit big, like looking at their paws, but, uh, you know, they're ready to find their loving forever home. And if you could take them together, it'd be great. Right? Oh, yes. We whisper about that, so not so scared, not anybody. So anyway, what you all got going on? Um, so we're actually still hoping to find some more candidates for El Rey Fido because that's coming up. Um, that's our annual Fiesta fundraising competition. And so uh, if you're wanting to sign up and have your puppy Fiesta royalty, you can go to sahumane.org slash ERF um, to sign up your pup, post a cute photo, a short little bio, and start raising money for our shelter. Think of the bragging rights. Mm -hmm. Hey, my dog is El Rey Fido out there. And uh, like she was saying, it's a fantastic fundraiser for the uh, San Antonio Humane Society. So if you'd like more information on that, all the fostering programs they have there, and it's Vanessa and Victor. Vanessa and Victor. Look at how sweet they did it, baby. 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. About 14,000 new cases of invasive cervical cancer will be diagnosed in the U.S. this year alone, according to the American Cancer Society. But as CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, a new study suggests that a particular cancer could be wiped out if efforts to stop it were stepped up. Nearly 4,300 American women will die from cervical cancer this year, according to estimates from the American Cancer Society. But a new study published in the Lancet Public Health Journal suggests that cancer could be eliminated within two decades in the U.S. Researchers say scaling up cervical cancer screening coverage in the U.S. to 90 percent could expedite elimination of the disease and avert more than 1,400 cases a year. They say this would be the most effective way of speeding up the eradication of the disease compared to current levels of screening and human papillomavirus vaccination. HPV causes most cervical cancer cases, according to the World Health Organization. This analysis follows recent published studies which suggest just one dose of the HPV vaccine may be just as effective as two or three doses at preventing cancer-causing HPV, although multiple doses are still recommended. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention currently recommends two doses of the HPV vaccine for boys and girls ages 11 and 12. Children who start the vaccine series on or after their 15th birthday need three shots over six months, according to the CDC. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Situation on the roads not getting any better. Let's get an update from Officer Marcus Trujillo. And uh, accidents are now just a uh, they're just starting to come in one right after the other. Now, of course, uh, the first thing I want to point out is we're not sure how long that situation is going to be with us up there by the airport. So uh, do have water on the roadway. Katrina Weber is out there at the scene on the access road, not on the main lanes. And it's right there between McCullough and uh, Airport Boulevard. So that's that stretch where uh, you're going to have some trouble navigating through the access road. And right now, eastbound 410, the exit ramp. Uh, for Airport Boulevard closed due to that uh, water there. Also southbound 281 uh, right there, Jones Mulsberger. That's before you get to the quarry area. We have, or just as you're arriving there, we have a, a minor accident currently in the clearing stages. Down on the south side, 410 at Roosevelt, we have another accident uh, that's going to be in the westbound lanes of 410. And then also 410 at Culebra, we have another accident in the clearing stages. Now, this is 410 McCullough. Once again, if you're eastbound on 410, headed from uh, McCullough San Pedro area back over towards the Broadway Nacogdoches area, that airport boulevard exit still closed uh, due to the amount of water we have on the accident. Access road. But look on the other side. We're still on good amount of water on the main lanes themselves. L a lot of spray being kicked up. This is 410 at Callahan. You can see east and westbound lanes moving just a little bit slower with that large amount of rain. And then we have there it is. 
Here's that other accident we were looking for, 410 at Gulliver Road. Looks like uh, the 410 at Ingram camera capturing that accident. This is uh, southbound 410 as you're in between Ingram and Gulliver Road. Looks like they're going to be off to that far right hand lane, at least, or left hand lane, rather, at least two lanes being blocked right now for those emergency vehicles so we can clear that accident. Now, officers are trying to clear these accidents just as quickly as possible. However, there is something you can do to help. Reduce that speed, increase that falling distance, general application of the brake and the accelerator, and no sudden movement of the steering wheel on your commute this morning. We wish you luck this morning. Good luck. Good luck. But this is going to end, yeah, and um, we'll see sunshine today. Right, we'll see some sunshine mixed in today. Obviously, we've got a little bit of rain out there by the airport right now on the camera lens over there, a uh, live cam looking over at the toward the east. And we're already starting to see, again, the kind of the tail end of this. It's not quite as, as filled in. Some of the rain is a little more broken up. Obviously, we do still have more of these showers and a few uh, moderate showers that are moving through town. And the, the problem has been, and like Marcus has been pointing out, there's a lot of standing water on the road. Uh, rainfall totals have not been just off the charts. As a matter of fact, by the airport, about two thirds of an inch of rain, but it came all at once, there was about a quarter of an inch and then about another third of an inch. And it came within maybe half hour, 45 minutes, these heavy downpours. And so that's why we're seeing all the runoff and seeing a lot of the uh, the ponding on the roads. And right now, it looks like some of it has stopped. And we will, like I said, continue to see this come to an end from west to east. And so I think by the, the heart of the, the morning commute, once we get into about 7, 730, uh, it's going to start to really taper off around here. But we'll still obviously have some of the standing water. Uh, Wind chills. Temperatures are in the mid to low 40s, but then shave off a few degrees because of the uh, wind, which is it's not overly breezy. I mean, yesterday in the afternoon, we had a couple of those stronger winds and boy, it just cut right through you. And uh, with the moisture and with some of that wind, it's a cold morning. Here's what the computer model has. This is the rapid update model. We still have some of these showers around, but then by again, 7 30, 8 o'clock, a lot of this is going to be moving on out of here. Still a few uh, showers in some of our uh, eastern metropolitan counties, but throughout the course of the morning, it all continues to move off to the east. We'll have some clouds left over by uh, noon and then more sunshine later on today. Call it partly cloudy skies, and then we continue to clear out overnight, and that's going to set us up for a couple of pretty chilly mornings the next few mornings and then staying on the colder side in the afternoon. Here's the uh, radar satellite loop over the past 12 hours. And again, all the individual cells are moving off to the north. The whole line is working its way off to the east, being pushed along with the upper low, which you can sort of make out this counterclockwise spin over there in the western part of the state. And that's going to push all this out of here. Obviously, in the higher elevations, it's a little bit of wintry mix, but we don't have to worry about that. So we've got this system moving across here. Then on the back side of it, we get this uh, shot of colder air coming on in here. So temperatures highs tomorrow and Friday are only going to be in about the, say, upper 50s, mid to upper 50s. It's going to be cold. It's going to be beautiful, though. Then in the weekend, we get more of a uh, zonal pattern around here. It's going to warm things up. We get more moisture coming on in. That may lead to just one or two stray showers. Better chance of rain Monday and then especially Tuesday. We've got another one of these, uh, you know, big southwesterly uh, flows moving on in here. But also in behind that, we're going to be seeing a fairly decent front move through. It looks like by Wednesday of next week and some uh, colder, windy conditions as it looks right now. 55 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And uh, call it partly cloudy by later on this afternoon. 62 for a high temperature. Nice looking afternoon. Tomorrow, going to be cold in the morning and staying pretty chilly in the afternoon. Only 55, 58 on Valentine's. So, as we were saying, it's going to be kind of snuggly weather on Valentine's. And then we go into the weekend and temperatures are going to warm up a little bit. Mid-60s Saturday, mid-70s on Sunday. Lots of clouds, maybe a couple of showers and a better chance of rain Tuesday. Thank you, Mike. 553, 45 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to tell you which to comb top honors at the 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Good morning, coming up here on GMA. The top dog is live in Times Square. Siva, the standard poodle, crowned the winner at Westminster overnight. And she's here live. She's gonna strut into Times Square. You'll see her only here on GMA. So more on the new best in show. Yeah, so if you just heard, Seba is a standard poodle. Took top honors at the 144th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show last night. Chosen from seven finalists that included a Whippet, a Havanese, 
a Shetland Sheepdog, a Golden Retriever, aw, a Wire Fox Terrier, and a Boxer. And this is the fifth time a standard poodle has won Best in Show since the first in 1991. Look for more coming up on Good Morning America right now. We're about three minutes away from the top of the hour. Selling your home in winter could be much easier than in other seasons. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, we'll take a look at some of the best times of year to sell a home. Transguide, you're going to want to stay tuned for the latest from Officer Marcus Trujillo. We'll get you updated with fresh information on a slew of accidents on a soggy Wednesday morning. A family feud turned into a stabbing overnight. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you what police say about this investigation. Outside with live cam, boy, that picture really tells the story this morning. A very rainy start to your midweek day. Mike's forecast coming up. Will the rain last all day? Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And he will have the answer momentarily. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, February 12th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Yeah, probably give yourself a lot of extra time to get to work today or to school because the roads are a mess. They really are. Marcus has more on that in a moment. Good morning, Mike Oster Hage. Good Mike. morning. To answer your question, no, it will not last all day long. As a matter of fact, it's going to last maybe for the next uh, couple of hours at most. The rain will. Now, one of the problems, obviously, we've had wet roads before, but a lot of these showers overall numbers haven't been that extreme as far as rainfall totals, but there were some hefty downpours, and so there's a lot of runoff. There's a lot of standing water on the roads this morning. Rain continues, individual cells working their way up to the north, but the whole line is working its way to the east, and it's really starting to uh, come to an end there in portions of Medina County. It's ended in uh, Uvalde County. Obviously, we still have a few uh, moderate showers that are going to be moving through town. We've, it's been kind of broken up a little bit more. It's a little more consistent rain earlier this morning, and yeah, it's, it has come down in places. Now, there's been about two thirds of an inch of rain officially out at the airport, but that came in two big downpours um, and each one maybe 15 minutes, half an hour. We we're getting like a quarter inch of rain, a third of an inch of rain. But when it comes down in 15 minutes, a half an hour, that's why there is a lot of runoff and uh, a lot of places where maybe some of the drains are plugged up. It's been flooding over uh, 41 in Bandera right now. Comfort 41 45 at the airport and there's a little bit of a wind chill in places. Mold is on the moderate side. I have a feeling that may be going up low amounts of everything else as of right now. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so 45 this morning and we'll stay bare, fairly steady the next couple of hours and then we start to uh, come up and going to have a decent warm up today. Gain about uh, well, anywhere from 15 to 25 degrees. So uh, mid 50s at noon today and then we're going to be up to the low 60s later on with a fair amount of sunshine. Still some clouds mixed on in here. Got a couple of beautiful days in store, but we are going to have some cold temperatures. Weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo. He is working on a couple of more accidents over there. What's going on, Marcus? Well, it looks like that area of 281 410 is becoming a big problem for us, Mike. We had Katrina earlier report to us that on the access road of, two, of uh, 410 between McCullough and 281, we're standing water on the roadway on the access road. Now we're getting reports of possible some water on the roadway on 281 as you're approaching Joe Smallsberger. Now we're already clearing a, an accident uh, right there at that same location. Another accident that we have is uh, 410 at Roosevelt. That's going to be in the westbound lanes, the entrance ramp to westbound 410 to continue on to the 41035 area. Looking at Transguide, here is that uh, area that uh, we reported earlier with Katrina Weber. If you are eastbound on 410, you normally take that airport exit underneath those flyover ramps. That exit is closed and it's closed due to the amount of water that is on the access road. Now that's not an area that we usually see flooding, so not sure what's causing that issue this time. However, it is closed. Now we had an accident here earlier, 410 at Ingram on those southbound main lanes. No worries in this area. That accident has been cleared and all lanes are open. However, if you've been following the other one since very early this morning, Northbound 35 at FM 1103. We had an accident very early this morning that completely shut down all the northbound main lanes. We still have some flashing lights up there, although three of those northbound main lanes are open. There is still a reduced speed through that area as you're passing those flashing lights. So remember, reduce that speed, increase that final distance, and please buckle up before you head out this morning. Mark. 
Thank you, sir. Top story right now. A man stabbed in the head after getting into an argument with his girlfriend's family. Happened on the west side this morning in the 600 block of South Navidad Street. Sarah Costa live at Public Safety Headquarters with more on how police are describing that chaotic scene. Sarah. Good morning, and police describe it as a tug of war between the victim's girlfriend's family. The girlfriend stuck in the middle of that tug of war. Police say it was over whether or not the girlfriend could stay at the boyfriend's house or go somewhere with the family. It was a man in his 30s at his home with his girlfriend, police say, when the family of the girlfriend arrived at the home. This is happening on the west side on the 600 block of South Navidad. Police say just after midnight, the girlfriend's aunt and her aunt's boyfriend showed up to his house. The aunt and her boyfriend said they wanted to take the man's girlfriend somewhere. The man refused to let her family members take her. That's when police say a tug of war with the girlfriend started. The aunt's boyfriend stepped in with a knife and stabbed the man twice, once in the back and once in the head. Police say when they arrived, the victim was not cooperating with officers. The victim was taken to Bamsey in stable condition. As for the aunt's boyfriend, who police say stabbed that man in his 30s, he was he fled the scene when police arrived. Police continue to look for him this morning. Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Also new this morning, a woman escaped her car just before a train hit it. This was on the northeast side this morning. Police say she followed directions from her GPS, which caused her to turn right onto the train tracks. This is near Walsam and Gibbs Sprawl. It was at just after one this morning. Officers say a driver was able to pull over, help her out of the car before the train hit it. Nobody was hurt. SAPD and Union Pacific are investigating the crash. 606 people across Bear County voicing what is important to them. That's the goal of the first Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll, and it was released yesterday. The first of four polls scheduled for 2020 zeroed in on several issues facing our diverse community. Some of those issues include poverty, crime, homelessness, and how they view the Alamo City. This morning, community leaders are voicing opinions on the poll and the results. To me, research here is a great planning tool. Well, I think it's very important to have a sense of how your community feels, um, especially uh, on geographic diversity, uh, understanding how people feel on one side of town versus another. Uh, it's a great benchmark for the San Antonio community to see what the issues of concern are to all of us, but also for our elected officials to see what the things are that they're pushing that may not be as much of a concern to, to our citizenry. It was interesting to see how low, let's say, climate, the climate issue polled as opposed to all the other issues that were on the board. And it was one of the open polls, but it's just interesting to see how, you know, city council and the mayor have been pushing that so hard when the majority of, you know, our population really doesn't feel like it's maybe as important or something to focus on. If you want to look at the results of the first poll, you can see them right now on ksat.com. You can also hear from more community leaders, such as Mayor Ron Nirenberg, and hear from Dave Metz, the person who conducted the poll. In New Hampshire, voter turnout was higher than it was back in 2016, with more than a quarter million more people cast their ballots. The state's 24 delegates divvied up between the top three candidates as Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden walked away empty-handed. ABC News political director Rick Klein has more. There is a clean winner in New Hampshire, but no real clarity out of this race. Senator Bernie Sanders, the big winner. He gets to say that he walks away with the most votes, but it turns out Mayor Pete Buttigieg is walking away with just as many delegates uh, as Sanders. Almost a tie, not quite, a little bit further separation than there was in Iowa. But right behind them, Amy Klobuchar, the surprise of the night. Nobody saw this coming. She came into the debate last week needing a boost in momentum. She got it. She's able to show that she's around to stay. Big surprises of the night include Senator Elizabeth Warren fading, uh, fading far from the pack, despite this being a neighboring state to her state of Massachusetts, and of course Joe Biden. He left the state early rather than face the consequences of a very lackluster night. And waiting on the other side of all of this after Super Tuesday, Mayor Mike Bloomberg, it all adds up to a volatile, uncertain picture for the Democrats running for president. There are a whole lot of ways that this could end, but it is just getting started. Rick Klein, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. And to hear more from the candidates in the New Hampshire primary, we will have more reactions in our next half hour of GMSA. You can also find out the latest on KSAT.com. Just search Vote 2020. 
Staying with politics in New York, former CNBC anchor Michelle Caruso Cabrera is challenging Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for her seat in Congress. As according to a filing with the Federal Election Commission, Ocasio-Cortez became a popular controversial political figure after her surprise win in 2018. Caruso Cabrera was at CNBC for more than two decades, also the network's chief international correspondent. The two will likely face off in a Democratic primary. In your morning headlines, crews in Baton Rouge, Louisiana are monitoring air quality after a fire broke out overnight at an ExxonMobil refinery. Take a look at this video. Firefighters now have the fire contained. The flames consumed part of the refinery. Local officials still don't know what caused it. They're investigating. Luckily, there are no reports of injuries. President Trump abruptly changing his mind about a top choice for a top treasury position. The president abruptly withdrawing the nomination for Jesse Liu in the wake of the Roger Stone investigation. Uh, Liu is a former attorney who headed the office that oversaw Stone's prosecution. Stone awaiting sentencing on several convictions related to the Mueller special counsel investigation. Well, a group of three high school students suing Delta for one of its aircraft dumping fuel. It happened last month. You probably recall this. It was over the Los Angeles area. A Delta flight bound for Shanghai turned around shortly after takeoff due to an in-flight situation. Well, the pilot said there was no need to dump any fuel, but the plane dumped it anyway. The fuel hit children at six different schools. The Federal Aviation Administration says the plane was not high enough to allow the fuel to dissipate before it hit the ground. A former Toronto Blue Jays relief pitcher suing the Houston Astros, claiming their sign-stealing scheme cost him his Major League Baseball career. Mike Bolsinger says his career was cut short after an August 2017 game in which he gave up four runs against the Strohs. He says he was immediately fired and hasn't been able to return to Major League Baseball. The suit says he went on to play baseball in Japan, where he was considered one of the top pitchers in 2018. He wants the Astros to return their postseason bonuses worth about $31 million and have the money go to charities. Right now, 6 11, 45 degrees. Heading to Disney this year is going to cost you more money. We'll see how much you have to pay for a one day pass to the theme parks. And coming up on GMSA, we're going to go back to Mike and Marcus and get the very latest on the situation outside right now. It is ugly. Six fourteen in your morning consumer headlines. Sprint stock jumped nearly 70 percent. T-Mobile stock jumping nearly 12 after a federal judge approved a massive merger worth twenty six billion dollars. Judge says the merger will not infringe on competition, rejecting a lawsuit filed by a dozen states. Pays the way for the deal to be finalized as early as April. A trip to a Disney theme park is going to cost you a lot more in 2020. Annual passes increased between 4 and 8 percent at both theme parks. That makes the most expensive one-day park hopper pass worth $200 each. A single day pass to Magic Kingdom will run about $124 each. Well, the highway is anything but a Magic Kingdom this morning. That's so true. It is a mess out there, Marcus. It is a mess, and the biggest problem seems to be centered around that 281 airport area. Uh, just take a look at all those icons out there. So we're getting reports of water over the roadway there. Southbound 281 as you're approaching Jones Mallsburger and then just past Jones Mallsburger where you do have a minor accident. Also on the access road of, two, of 410 rather between McCullough and 281, the eastbound access road getting reports of water still over the roadway. Now take a look at this. Uh, well, we have another accident, 410 at Roosevelt, the westbound entrance ramp. That should be just about wrapped up and out of the way. Now this is 35 at FM 1103. That's headed back up towards New Braunfels. Earlier this morning, northbound 35 was completely shut down all the main lanes due to an 18 wheeler uh, jackknife up there in that vicinity. Right now, we still have some flashing lights, but we do still have the lanes open. So traffic is moving through that area. You just need to be a little careful with those flashing lights. Then there's the airport area, eastbound 410, uh, just past McCullough, that exit for Airport Boulevard still closed. That is the area where we have Katrina Weber out there with water over the access road uh, causing issues. Now, this is not an area where we're used to having problems that usually that area is uh, pretty incident free regarding uh, high water. So not sure what the difference is today as we take a look at some of the areas. Well, there we go having a little problem with this thing. There we go, 35 at Evans Road, southbound main lanes, slowing down 
uh, as you're approaching 1604. So very, very heavy traffic. Just remember those two areas of concern. Northbound 35 at FM 1103. Still have flashing lights with that jackknife 18 wheeler and then 410 at uh, airport. That airport exit is closed. You will have to continue on to the next available exit and then take the turnaround and come back on the access road. Oh boy. Not a good morning. Not at all. Thank you, sir. And this rain is going away. Yeah, it's beginning to taper off. Now, we obviously still have some showers out there. And the problem, like what Mark has just been talking about, is a lot of runoff because even though numbers have been sent all morning long, haven't been just, you know, off the charts, downpours, it kind of came all at once. You know, the really hefty uh, downpours. We picked up uh, two thirds of an inch of rain approximately out there at the airport, and it came in two big waves. One of them just about, uh, say, have 45 minutes ago or so with one of those big uh, cells kind of moving on through there. We do still have some rain and step back and take a look. Yes, the rain is now starting to uh, taper off and come to an end. So most of it has ended in uh, Medina County, moving out of Bandera, Kerrville, uh, Kerr County, and we still obviously have a few of these showers left over. But again, this continues to work its way off to the uh, east of us. So once the, the we get into the heart of the commute, starting maybe in about what uh, half hour, 45 minutes, an hour or so, obviously there's a lot out there right now, but most of this is going to be out of there. But we'll have the residual effects of it, the runoff and some of that ponding on the roads. Temperatures haven't moved in the past few hours, still mid to low 40s little bit of wind chill to deal with and of course it's that damp cold so it really kind of gets you winds are not a huge factor today nor will they be throughout the day 5 10 miles per hour uh, temperatures though are going to be about 50s low 60s so you know you kind of notice those light little breezes again computer models continue to push this on out of here throughout the morning we have clouds left over through the morning hours and by noon and then we'll have partly cloudy skies by later on this afternoon, more sunshine gets us a bit, like I mentioned, in the low 60s. Then with the clear skies and another shot of cooler air moving in here, it's going to be cold the next couple of days with temperatures probably not cracking 60 tomorrow and Friday, but it's going to be nice and sunny. Here's the uh, loop over the past 12 hours, and as expected, this wave of rain moved in about midnight and then is continuing to work its way off to the east. And then there's the upper level low, which is pushing that on out of here, and we've got some beautiful weather, like I said, in behind it. And then the weekend comes about. It is going to be warmer by the weekend, but we're going to get back into we've got this nice little northwesterly flow tomorrow and uh, Friday with the cooler air, but we get more of a southwesterly flow for the weekend. So that helps to warm things up, but a lot more moisture. So we're going to have lots of clouds around here over the weekend and maybe a couple of showers. 55 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies still, and then more sunshine later on today, and we make it up into the uh, low 60s, call it partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow, going to be a beautiful day. Plenty of sunshine, a few morning clouds perhaps, and then plenty of uh, sunshine, but 55, 35 starting off Friday morning. Valentine's Day looks beautiful and on the chilly side. Then we go into the weekend, and not bad overall. It is going to be milder with a lot of clouds, maybe a couple of showers, better chance of rain by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Okay. It's going to be cold, but nice for a couple days. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. 620, 45 degrees. A special prosecutor has indicted Jesse Smollett, the actor who allegedly made up the story of a racially motivated attack. Find out more in your GMA First Look after the break. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Not a tissue. Protection. Lysol kills over 100 illness causing germs and viruses, even those that may cause runny noses. Lysol, what it takes to protect. When you come home and you've had a hard day at work and you walk in the door and she just looks at you like you are sunshine, it's just, there's no other feeling like that. Isn't that right, BB? BB's family, so I feed her blue. What's my safe flight story? My truck is my livelihood. So when my windshield cracked, the experts at Safely Auto Glass came right to me. Hi, I'm Adrian. Oh, thanks for coming. With service I could trust. Right, girl? Safe like repair, safe like replace. When you're confident in your gut, you feel confident to take on anything. With Benefiber, you'll feel the power of gut health confidence every day. Benefiber is a 100% natural prebiotic fiber. 
Benefiber. Trust your gut. In this morning's GMA First Look, indicted actor Jesse Smollett facing a new set of criminal charges nearly a year after prosecutors dropped similar charges against him for allegedly staging a homophobic and racist attack. A grand jury indicting the 37-year-old on six counts of disorderly conduct related to making false statements about last year's alleged attack. That special prosecutor, Dan Webb, appointed to review the case after Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox abruptly dropped the charges against Smollett in March of last year. Fox, who's up for re-election, telling me back then... Our office uh, handles cases like this, class four felonies, disorderly conduct. Many of them uh, with similar outcomes. We'll have the latest on Jesse Smollett coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. Trending right now on KSAT.com, vintage market days of Greater San Antonio will return at the end of February. The upscale open-air market will have architecturally salvaged and repurposed items such as furniture, paintings, antiques, and clothing. If you're confused by any of that, you can always ask one of your hipster friends. <laughs> you can get more ticket, inf ticket information <laughs> on KSAT.com. You can own a bat cave in Texas, although not the bat cave. The Monarch Ranch in West Texas is home to Fern Cave, where over a million free tail bats nest every year. The price may be too steep for most of us, though. The cost is $26 million. The absolute best burger in Texas can be found right here in the Alamo City. Papa's Burgers El Caliente Burger was named the best in Lone Star State by Eat This, Not That, which is a food website. Westside Burger Joint is no stranger to fame, which ranked number four in the nation in 2018. You can find all of these stories right now on KSAT.com. Your time now, 626, and it's 45 degrees outside. Democratic primary is a close one after the New Hampshire results. We'll see who won, who lost, and how the candidates are responding. Hey, good news. The Spurs can take the monkey off the backs. They finally won a game on the rodeo road trip. We'll have highlights. And outside with Transguide, we've got heavy traffic, slick roads, water ponding on the roads. We'll get an update from Marcus on the situation, and he'll try to steer you clear of some major accidents. We have late breaking news. Firefighters are on the scene of a fire in the 13,800 block of Briar Meadows Street. That's on the northeast side, not far from Stall Road in Nacogdoches. Our Katrina Weber is live on the scene. So what can you tell us, Katrina? Well, I can tell you that at least one house is on fire. We see flames uh, erupting from the roof. They've been raging for quite a while. This fire, we've been hearing them talk about it for at least 20 minutes. You can see they have their ladder truck extended, pouring water on top of the, those stubborn flames that they seem to be having trouble putting out. Uh, as I say, at least one house. We're not able to get too close to see what exactly is burning, but I did see police and a firefighter escort the people out of the home next door just a little while ago. Uh, they were helping them get their car out of the garage that you see open there and helping uh, them get into the car and get away from here. So it seems that at least maybe they believe that there is a danger that this fire could spread to the house next door. Uh, we have not had a chance to talk to anyone. We just got here ourselves a little while ago and so this is what uh, we can see from our perspective that there is at least one house on fire it seems to be a stubborn fire because they're pouring tons and tons of water on those flames and they're just not going out just to give you some idea this neighborhood briar meadow is uh, in the area of thousand of uh, of nacogdoches and higgins road we're in an area up here on the northeast side and again that is the house on fire uh, it looks like they are trying to keep those flames from spreading to any others. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you for the late breaking news, Katrina. Hey, good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It's February 12th. Been really busy on the roadways this morning. It's just not been a good morning all the yeah. way around uh, between the roadways, uh, the fire right now. So, folks, give it some extra time this morning. Take your patience with you. You will have to give it an extra 10 to 15 minutes. We still have a number of accidents out there on the roadway. Most importantly, water over the roadways in areas that we normally don't see. One is up there by the airport, the access road of eastbound access road of 410 between McCullough and 21 and now down on the southwest side on 1604 access road northbound between or as you're approaching rather Northwest Military Highway and that's our Northwest uh, Military and that's a new area that they just constructed mm -hmm. 
Uh, but we do have a vehicle, we're shot, have a shot, we have a shot on trans guide of a vehicle stuck there, and you can see just how high that water is. So you need your coffee, oh. you need your umbrella, maybe some aspirin before you head out the door this morning. Yeah, patience, no you need lots of patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rain is continuing to, uh, to start to taper off, and it's ending from west to east. We've still got a couple of showers out there right now, and temperatures are in the 40s. Now, out at the airport, about two-thirds of an inch of rain, but it came in two big clumps, if you will. Sure did. And I think that may be the reason why, you know, about a... A quarter, a third of an inch of rain in 15, 20 minutes or so out there by the airport, which may be the problem there. And in a couple of spots, uh, Leon Valley, for instance, picked up about uh, an inch and a third of rain. Really? So there were those localized heavier amounts and over toward the, the west side of town, about an inch of rain, which may be the cause for some of that standing water. Makes there, sense. Like 1604. 62, we will have some sunshine, though, later on today. So that's uh, going to be encouraging. And then a couple of very beautiful days tomorrow, as well as Friday. Here's what's going on over over there with live cam by the airport a couple of drops still on the lens and and again we still obviously have some rain out there the big picture though it's all continuing to work its way off to the east so we are starting to see the the trailing edge of this rain and that will continue to move on through so it's not going to be raining during the heart of the morning commute which basically starts about now in through the next couple of hours however like marcus has been talking about there's a lot of standing water on the roads and all the runoff as well temperatures uh, are steady low to mid 40s 39 lost maples but a little bit of a wind chill feels like 32 right now in lost maples and it's that damp chill that really kind of sneaks down the back of your neck Molds on the moderate side, low amounts of everything else. Be interesting to see what mold does with all this moisture out there. Couple of nice days, very, very nice days uh, tomorrow as well as Friday. Will that extend into the weekend? Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. So one more time, a couple of big areas with standing water, right? That's right, Mike. And then uh, accidents and the, the biggest problem, the concentration of the problem is up there at the airport area. But we have some other areas of concern. Uh, here's that uh, water over the roadway, 1604 northbound as you're approaching Military Drive on that far west side. But it's on the access road. Uh, next, we have, uh, that's not water the roadway. That's just the icon there for the rodeo and the rodeo traffic. So be aware throughout the day and the weekend as well. Also, 281 southbound lanes as you're approaching Joe Smallsburg reports of water on the roadway and then the access road of 410 between McCullough and 281 also water over the roadway now southbound 35 starting to slow down as you're approaching Wiener for a thousand oaks for another accident uh, being reported this is accident uh, looks like it just cleared up southbound 21 in Jones Mossberger and this is a uh, 35 at FM 1103 finally in this area traffic is resuming back to normal but this is 1604 military drive. We're looking at the northbound access road and right there you see that vehicle that stalled. You see the tow truck there and uh, there is the water. There's the reflection there. There's the drainage ports. You see how high that water is a little bit higher up here. The main lanes you see the amount of spray being kicked up by those vehicles headed back over towards that highway 151 and 1604 area. Moving over to 35 at Wiener, there you can see lots of backup there from that accident. That accident appears to be blocking the two left-hand lanes as the trans guy just zooms out a little bit. So you can see just how much that is affecting the southbound main lanes at 35. Traffic backing up all the way to loop 1604 at this time. 410 to McCullough, once again, folks, as a reminder, if you're eastbound on 410, you normally take that airport boulevard exit just past McCullough, right before you go underneath the 21 flyover ramps. That ramp still closed due to the amount of water on the access road between McCullough and 281. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. You do have your hands full, sir. What started as a family argument ended with a man getting stabbed in the head. It happened early this morning in the 600 block of South Navidad. Sarah Costa is live downtown at Public Safety Headquarters. Sarah, how did all this start? Good morning, Mark. Well, police say it was a family feud between a man and his girlfriend's family. Police say a man in his 30s was at his west side home on South Navidad with his girlfriend when just before, when just at midnight, the girlfriend's aunt and the aunt's boyfriend showed up to his house. The aunt and her boyfriend said they wanted to take the man's girlfriend somewhere. The man refused to let her family members take her. That's when police say a tug of war with the girlfriend started. The aunt's boyfriend stepped in with a knife and stabbed the man twice, once in the back and once in the head. Police say when they arrived, the victim was not cooperating with officers. He was taken to Bamsey in stable condition. As for the aunt's boyfriend, who police say stabbed that man, he fled the scene when police arrived and police continued to search for him this morning. 
Live from Public Safety Headquarters, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. The Democratic Party has declared its first state victor in the 2020 campaign after Senator Bernie Sanders won the New Hampshire primary. Although he only narrowly defeated Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Meanwhile, other candidates who were once seen as front runners had tough nights. ABC's Trevor Alt breaks it down. New Hampshire voters have spoken. Senator Bernie Sanders wins the first in the nation primary. This victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. Sanders had won New Hampshire in 2016 by 22 points, but this victory far closer, edging out Mayor Pete Buttigieg by only a few thousand votes. A campaign that some said shouldn't be here at all has shown that we are here to stay. Rounding out the top tier, Senator Amy Klobuchar, riding a late wave of support from her most recent ABC debate performance and pushing a message of unity and sensibility. Donald Trump's worst nightmare is that the people in the middle, the people who have had enough of the name calling and the mud slinging, have someone to vote for in November. <laughs> But for several candidates, the night was underwhelming at best. Andrew Yang and Senator Michael Bennett have now dropped out, while Senator Elizabeth Warren and former Vice President Joe Biden, once frontrunners nationally, both finished with single-digit support. Still, they're vowing to fight on. All right, come from, that's the opening bell, not the closing bell. And remember, these state votes are about more than just seeing who wins. They're about collecting delegates for the nomination. And that math can be a little bit odd. Even though Senator Bernie Sanders has gotten more votes in Iowa and New Hampshire, Mayor Pete Buttigieg has earned two more delegates than Sanders has. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. The House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee today will hold a hearing on the novel coronavirus outbreak. More than 1,100 people have died. Nearly 45,000 are infected. Meanwhile, the first batch of Americans evacuated out of the epicenter of Wuhan, China, are now home after waiting out a 14-day quarantine with no symptoms. Acting White House Budget Director Russ Vaught will appear before the House Budget Committee today to testify about President Donald Trump's proposed $4.8 trillion budget. The proposal reduces future spending on Medicaid, Medicare, and other social safety programs by reforming how providers are paid. It also includes increased funding for the military and NASA. Is it Christmas? Because we just got a gift. Spurs finally won a game during this year's rodeo road trip, beating the Oklahoma City Thunder, Thunder 114-106 last night. LaMarcus Aldridge and DeJounte Murray each scored 25 points. Derek White added 17, eight assists as well. Spurs played without their leading scorer, DeMar DeRozan, out with back spasms for a second straight game. After playing seven games in 11 days, Spurs have more than a week off. That's because this weekend is the NBA All-Star Game and the weekend. No Spurs will be participating, giving the whole team plenty of rest. Spurs play the Jazz next Friday. That's February 21st in Salt Lake City. And then the guys get ready to come home. We needed that win. Whew, big shot That's in good. the arm. 640, 45 degrees. Selling your home in the winter could be much easier than in other seasons. After the break, we're going to take a look at the best time of year to sell a house. Think winter is a terrible time to sell your house? Wrong. The combination of fewer sellers and eager buyers makes it a great time to list. Many people think selling their home in the winter is not a great idea, but if you think about it, there's less competition because there's usually fewer homes on the market. Also, when there are buyers in the market in the winter, they're more motivated because they're not just window shopping. Less competition ultimately is the number one reason uh, to, for a seller to list in the winter or in the perceptually poorer months. According to a recent national housing report, winter listed homes are 9% more likely to sell and they sell a week faster than homes listed in other seasons. Keep in mind it may require a little more effort, especially if the weather takes a turn for the worse. If you're showing your house in the winter, you just need to be flexible for changing weather conditions. So if you have a showing coming up and snow's just come through, be sure you clear the sidewalk and driveway before you leave your house. And make sure you clean the windows to let in as much light as possible. That's especially important on a day like this. For GMSA, Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Afraid to ask, but we need to get an update on time saver traffic. I know, it's been kind of messy.
And it's not getting any better. We have another one just popping up. Looks like we have an accident there. Uh, Highway 87 Rigsby Road there and uh, 410. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be an easy commute for a lot of folks this morning. We'll take you extra time. So give it an extra 10 to 15 minutes this morning. Big problem. Southbound 35. That's southbound 35 traffic trying to get past an accident right there. Thousand Oaks traffic backed up all the way beyond Evans Road. That's outside 1604 in those southbound main lanes. Then multiple issues. Uh, we had an accident southbound 35 at Joe's Mallsburg. are still getting reports of some water over the roadway, a little bit higher than usual there. 281 at Jones Mallsburg Sunset area. And then take a look. This is 1604 at Military Drive on the far, far west side. Those northbound main lanes look pretty good. We do still have a lot of spray on there. However, the access road right now that is shut down due to water over the roadway on the access road. We did have a tow truck just a few minutes ago uh, pull the vehicle out of that uh, high water and tow that vehicle away. Now take a look. That's 35 at Wiener showing that accident up ahead of Thousand Oaks. The two right hand lanes blocked traffic backed up all the way to 35 at Evans and it's just getting worse. Pretty soon it's going to be up to FM 3009. Now eastbound 410 at McCullough. We still have that exit ramp for the airport boulevard exit that is still closed due to water over the roadway as well. Folks, take your patience with you. Reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And most of the rain is continuing to kind of taper off here in town and it will be ending very shortly. Now, numbers are, are unofficial, but as of what we've gotten so far, uh, just a, under two thirds of an inch of rain that brings our February total and again. Official numbers haven't come in, but just shy of an inch of rain, and that put us back on the plus side by about a fifth of an inch of rain. Then going back to January, we've had uh, 2.84 inches, and that's about a third above where we should be. And we've got some more rain in the forecast. It's only the 12th of February. We've got some more rain in the forecast by the middle part of next week as well. So this, yes, has definitely been some beautiful rain out there by the airport. Still a couple of drops on the lens looking off to the east, and this is what uh, has been picked up now. It's parts of of uh, Leon Springs reported about an inch and a third of rain. And then on the west side of town, there's uh, some reports of about an inch of rain. So we've had those pockets been pretty heavy. The heaviest rain has been well up to the north up there, uh, northern Blanco County, up around uh, even Johnson City. And again, the rain continues to work its way off to the east. We still have a few light showers here in town. Those will continue to kind of taper off and come to an end. And this is the uh, the trailing edge of that rain as it moves on out. But there's that uh, kind of moderate shower now moving through downtown right now. So we're not done with it quite yet, but for the majority of the, the commute, we're not going to have any additional rain. It's just going to be the standing water Marcus has been talking about as well as some of the, the runoff temperatures still in the low to mid 40s, couple of 30s out there, a little bit of a wind chill, not much. Wind is not all that strong, 5, 10 miles per hour. That's about it. It's not going to be a huge issue throughout the day. That rain will continue again to move on out to the east and we will see more sunshine later on this afternoon and that's going to put us up into the uh, low 60s today just about a normal high temperature maybe a couple of degrees shy of that 55 at noon still mostly cloudy skies and then later on this afternoon partly cloudy nice day wind out of the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour 62 for high temperature clear skies and we get a reinforcing shot of uh, some cooler air coming on in here so puts us down to a little bit below normal tomorrow morning and then only 55 plenty of sunshine valentine's beautiful day but it is going to be on the cool side 35 starting off that's here in town so definitely a good hard freeze in the hill country 58 for high temperature much milder this weekend more clouds around here maybe a couple of showers and like i said a uh, better chance of rain by Monday and especially Tuesday of next week. All right, thanks, Mike. Tin till, just about tin till, 45 degrees. Well, you may not know it, but those Valentine's chocolates could help your lover's heart. Join us tomorrow on GMSA and learn ways to take care of your Valentine's heart. Kind of a woeful start to our Wednesday out there in the weather and traffic department. Uh, as we take a look back towards downtown, clouds obscuring the top of the tallest structures here in downtown San Antonio. You're watching GMSA. Back to late breaking news where firefighters still on the scene of a large house fire in the 13,800 block of Briar Meadow. That's on the northeast side, not far from Higgins and Nacogdoches. Katrina Weber live on the scene. What's the latest, Katrina? 
Well, we are still waiting for our official word on exactly what's been happening here. A spokesman showed up just within the last few minutes. I can tell you what I can see, though. These flames, they still won't die. This is coming up on an hour since firefighters had uh, the call here to the 13,800 block of Briar Meadow. Flames still showing from the roof of this house. I did talk to a neighbor, a woman who lives next door. She says firefighters pounded on her door, told her to get out. We also saw the people on the other side being escorted out of their homes, all as a precaution. But that neighbor did tell me that uh, no one officially lives in this home, but there have been some people staying here, people who have been using a generator inside the house. She says there's been no electricity or water for some time, but a generator which has gasoline in it, obviously, and maybe that is what is fueling this fire. Again, we have not talked to firefighters yet. We don't know what the problem is, but I can tell you that this flame, these flames have been burning, like I said, for almost an hour. Uh, we expect to get an update from that spokesman here in the next few minutes, and we'll have more information for you. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo draws more than 2 million visitors each year. And while some people go for the music or the carnival, most Texans go for the rodeo. But have you ever stopped to think how American Rodeo as we know it began? Alicia Barrera visits the rodeo fairgrounds to learn about a new event that some consider to be the grandfather of rodeo. That's today at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's get the very latest on what's happening on the roads with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Any better, Marcus, or no, maybe not? Not a whole lot. That's the major accident. Southbound 35, past Wiedner as you're approaching Thousand Oaks. Traffic backed up beyond Evans Road, FM 3009, and that congestion is just getting worse. We have water over the roadway close to the airport. It's on the access road between McCullough and 281. So eastbound 410, that exit ramp for Airport Boulevard, still closed. And then we also have water on the roadway right there. And as you can see right there on the edge of your screen, that's how high the water is. You see the waves from that one vehicle that just uh, went crawling through there. Folks, remember, turn around, don't drown. It's the best advice. Stay away from those high water areas. Mike? Thank you very much, sir. And the rain continues to uh, kind of come to an end. Still a few drops out there. We do still have a few light showers in and around town. Uh, but as you can see, most everything is continuing to work its way off to the east. So for the rest of the morning commute, rain will again taper off. But we still have the runoff and some of that standing water. Temperatures are cold and there's a little bit of a wind chill, but we will see sunshine today. 62 for a high temperature with uh, partly cloudy skies. Beautiful the next couple of days, but it is going to be chilly. Highs in the, only in the 50s and then warmer for the weekend. <coughs> a lot of clouds around here. Maybe a stray shower or two, but a better chance of some rain by the middle of next week. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Please be careful. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next on deck here on KSAT 12.